Greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome to the premiere episode of Learning the Ropes. I'm XLJ, the OG, along with Mr. B. Oh, and we are so excited to be with you exclusively on the Panda Wrestling Company Twitch Channel Network. Man, my juices are flowing. How excited are you, Mr. B-Roll? I'm so freaking pumped. I feel like I just drank like 10 freaking Boost Energies or something. So this is our first experience ever live streaming, folks. So bear with us. We may have some technical difficulties along the way. Hey, we're learning as we go, just like we're going to be learning the ropes. So a little background about us, if you don't know us. So myself, I've been a professional wrestling fan for over 30 years now. and. Uh, just like the rest of you, just addicted. I love it. I just, it, it, it is my all. It is everything. So that all being said, Mr. B-Roll over here, why don't you tell them about how you got hooked on wrestling by me? So I actually have not been a wrestling fan for that long. In fact, not even a year. Not uh, even. Not even a year. It's all because this guy right here dragged me along to my first pro wrestling live event. It was in taping of AEW Dynamite in Indianapolis back in last November. That's right. And it was freaking awesome. And I was instantly hooked. That's right. But now, of course, if you've gone down the rabbit hole, and I have to say this, I am so damn impressed with like how much wrestling knowledge you've been able to attain in such a quick time frame. Because there's just so much. There's a gamut. You all know how freaking the, the history of wrestling it just goes on and on forever that's one of the beautiful things i think about pro wrestling but you have really taken to it very quickly sir and i am very damn impressed but you still got a little bit to learn and that's exactly what we're going to do on this show as i'm going to go through the history of professional wrestling and pretty much teach you the ropes my friend and what a week we got to play. We got to say, man, what a week it's been here on the Panda Wrestling Company, man. Everybody, all the content creators, all of you guys have done a freaking awesome and amazing job. And we are truly honored to be a part of this. And we get to close it out the week. So does that make us the main event, brother? <laughs> Talk about some pressure. And yes, Shit. the Panda shirt does look sharp. You can get that exclusively at Sweet Doll Face Creations. There you go. Yeah. and. Tell them about the coffee, sir. The coffee? Yes. Are you talking about rootless coffee? I'm talking about rootless coffee. The Root delicious and scrum diddly umptious rootless coffee. Rootless coffee. The coffee is guaranteed to put the mo back into your Joe. You can save 15% by using the code Panda Coffee. That's right. So. And also, too, by the way, so how we all kind of got started down this realm of, like, um, doing uh, dad hat wrestling. Hey, hell yeah, two living legends. Much respect, my friend. Uh, pretty much, we actually do have a YouTube channel called Cold TV as well as a podcast called Coldcast, which is, we call it, the podcast for all of us. And we talk a lot about wrestling, but now we're going to do a lot of talking of wrestling on here on Learning the Ropes. But you should definitely check those out as well. So, sir, are you ready to get into our topic for our very first episode of Learning the Ropes? I am very excited because... What are we talking about, Mr. B-Roll? Absolutely one of my favorite things. Um, if anybody's followed me for a while, they will know my favorite type of wrestling is tag team wrestling. Big tag, brother. There you go. Love me some tag team wrestling, too, man. Like, So this is going to be a great topic for us to discuss. And man, we got a ton of stuff we're going to try to get into and cover here. Hell, we got a format, folks. That's right. We came prepared for the Sunday night show. That's right. All right. So first off, I want to, you know me, I'm a stickler for the history of pro wrestling. And of course, I'm all about the origins. So believe it or not, did you know tag team wrestling didn't even start? until the early 1900s now it's kind of up for debate as far as like where tag team wrestling actually officially started but most wrestling historians will tell you in the san francisco territory is where tag team wrestling got its start interesting yeah now the first real big moment in tag team wrestling really didn't actually occur until 1936 at the houston city auditorium and believe it or not in 1936 
there was a tornado. That's right, a tornado tag team match, sir. Now, now hold on. You mean to tell me there was an actual tornado in the mat? Yes, yes, there was a tornado in the ring of action. <laughs> oh! Okay, anyways. Everybody gets one back joke. Yes, and you used it within the first five minutes. So and I am a dad, so I, I'm allowed a dad joke. So there you go. This is true. So this tag team match, it was the heel team of Tiger Dahlia and Fasul Muhammad. And I know I butchered the hell of that. But you know what you could always do if you have any doubts about that? You could always what, 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 what the pedia, that shit. That's right, because everybody gets, gets one, one, as we always say. So it was that tag team going up against Heinrich Steinborn. The German babyface and his partner, Whiskers Savage. Whiskers. What a Savage. fucking name. Whiskers Savage. What's your name? My name's Whiskers. Whiskers Savage. I mean, God. They just, they just, man, what like why has that not been resurfaced or something? If you can if you can reuse Bearcat Keith Lee or whatever, man, why can't you do like, I don't know, Whiskers Savage Chompa or some shit? Who knows, right? I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, but anyways, it was in a two out of three falls matchup. And the funny thing is what the heels did, because you got to keep in mind, it's in the 30s. So it's like still presented as more realistic. What the heels ended up doing is they tied up the uh, Whisker Savage and they beat the crap out of Steinborn and pretty much won the matchup. So there you, go. there you go. And the rest, as they say, is history. So, but yeah, tag team wrestling, they would really kind of come to fruition in the mid-century, pretty much. You have where you had uh, uh, different um, tag teams in that area, and we're going to kind of briefly touch upon them. Um, but let's talk about some of the lingo and the rules of tag team wrestling. Okay. Obviously, well, you're familiar with the terminology of legal man. Quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, okay. And you're familiar with the hot tag, of course. Yes, the hot tag would be when the babyface is literally getting his butt handed to him on a silver platter, and then finally, daylight happens. He's able to get over to the, his corner to his partner and make the tag. The hot tag. There you go. Familiar with the blind tag? The blind tag is when you make a tag without the opponent knowing it. So to say. There you go. Good enough. And now, standard rules, of course, you when you tag in and out between opponents, you're supposed to have only five seconds, unless it's an AEW match. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to go there. I love me some AEW, though, seriously, but just saying. Um, yeah, so typically you got your five seconds, and um, the, technically both feet of uh, the rest are supposed to be outside the ring, but I don't think anybody pays attention to that shit. And technically, you're supposed to be holding that little rope. And you got to be holding the tag rope. I'll never forget the first time when you asked me, what's the rope for? And I was just like, oh, that's, story. that's awesome we that you're at, asking we me. Were at. You picked up on it in the first event you ever went to. Yeah. Do you remember what was the first tag match you saw? What was the tag Ooh, match? First tag match. I, I feel like seen. it involved the Dark Order on like Dark. Probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Because the very first match that night, would you well you're gonna count a trio's match as a tag match right like uh, yes for you we will okay gun club versus somebody who's the gun club i know the ass boys <laughs> i'm just saying so and of course the referee has to see the tag or they're supposed to so all right we covered the terminology because we got a lot of ground to cover so let's get right into it let's talk about some of the great tag teams and we're at we're gonna go old school on you guys first okay so the very first real famous tag team believe it or not check out this name the fabulous kangaroos yes and the whole gimmick was from australia and they had the like the outback shit and all that stuff so now in our neck of the woods the most beloved team of cousins dick the bruiser and the crusher uh was an amazing tag team so let's talk about families let's talk about the funk brothers you had the Fashans, the Valiant Brothers, Pat Patterson and Ray Stevens. How about those assassins, those dastardly assassins in their mask? You didn't know who was who. The Blackjacks. You talk about a badass tag team right there, man. Blackjack Lanza and Blackjack Mulligan. Whew. Some bad mother truckers, man. The Texas Outlaws. Some other bad mother truckers as well. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, and Dick Murdoch. 
I want to come back and talk to them about them here in just a minute. Also, the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, Wrecking Gene crew. and Ole Anderson originally, and then Arn Anderson coming in to replace Gene Anderson. And we got to talk WWF tag teams. How about Mr. Fuji and Professor Tanaka? Along, we also got to talk about Rocky Soul Man Johnson and Tony, Mr. US, sell me some of your feet picks, Atlas. That's right. I went there. Yeah, he did. Because he likes feet. Just throwing that out there. In case you didn't know, Mr. Tony, Tony Atlas, not me. Not me. Yeah, you don't. But Mr. Tony Atlas does. So. And of course, the wild Samoans. I mean, the wild Samoans struck fear into the hearts of children and adults as well. I mean, like, just they're, they're number one, they're from the most bright, famous wrestling family there is, the Anoy family. The, you know, they're freaking Samoans, so they're badasses. So, I mean, what more is there to say about the Wild Samoans? Am I right? When you're right, you're right. Damn. And, and when you're wrong, you're still right. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's correct. So, that being said, I said I wanted to kind of come back here. I want to touch about talk about the Texas Outlaws. And I have got a surprise and a treat for all of you tonight, okay? This is some unearthed footage that never has seen the light of day, okay? This is an excerpt from the Dusty Rhodes documentary they put out several years ago uh, through the WWE. And so this is an exclusive video I was able to uncover. This, this video footage has never seen the light of day. All right. Are you excited for this, Mr. B-Roll? Wow. Premiering here on That's right. the Road. So I'm going to play it for you now. And bear with me, folks, because it's the first time I'm doing it. So we're going to try to get this video up and running. Mr. B-Roll, why don't you just sit there and look pretty and plug some stuff for it? Plug some stuff. Plug some stuff. Do you like my shirt? I love it. You can buy it on Sweet Dollface Creations, along with a Learning the Rope shirt, along with a Cole TV shirt, along with a, let's see who else is on there, Dad Trainer, a Polly Barrels, and much more. Perfect. All right, here we go, folks. So, Dickie Murdoch and I had just worked Jack Briscoe and Jose Lothario in a Texas Tornado match in the sports stadium in Orlando. He ended up going to no contest, and that crowd was so pissed. I mean, they were throwing all sorts of plunder at us, if you will. So, we waited in the back forever to go on home, and we drank a couple cases of beer. So, it's 3 in the morning, and I'm driving down the floor of the panhandle, and Dickie Murdoch says, pull over. I says, Dickie Murdoch, do you have to take another piss? He says, no, Dream, look over there. So, I look over yonder, and I see a big-ass bull. I says, Dickie Murdoch, what the hell are you going to do with that bull? He looks me square in the eyes, and he says, Dream... I'm going to do cocaine off that bull's ass. I said, Dickie Monarch, you ain't going to do no cocaine off a goddamn bull's ass. But lo and behold, he went out there and he did cocaine off a bull's ass. That was Dickie Monarch for you. Wow. Wow. You heard it straight oh, from the mouth. Oh, my goodness. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, talking about the late, great Dick Murdoch, man. And, I mean, the Outlaws was a badass team, and they were notorious for, like, tearing shit up. Uh, I mean, dude, the you you there's stories like Ric Flair, Ric Flair, the Nature Boy, wanted to be a Texas Outlaw. Like when he first came into wrestling, he wanted to be with Dusty Rhodes and Dick Murdoch. I mean, that just shows you how influential that tag team was. So, and don't worry, folks, we are going to cover a whole lot of tag teams here tonight as well. And we're going to get to some of your favorites, like I, like the Dudley Boys, like Edge and Christian, like the Hardys and so on and so forth. But let's kind of move on here a little bit, and let's talk about my favorite era of tag team wrestling, where I feel like tag team wrestling really grew, and we're talking about the mid-'80s. First, we got to, store, of course, talk about the WWF. Uh, first team I want to highlight for you here, the U.S. Express of Mike Rotunda and Barry Windham. And Mr. B-Roll, I got a question for you, sir. Are you ready for your bullshit fact of the day? Oh, I'm so ready, and I'm, 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 I'm going to take notes. Good. All right. Did you know that the U.S. Express actually came out to the theme music of Hulk Hogan's? That's right. It was actually their music before Hulk Hogan's. You mean? The iconic. 
I am a real American. That's right. That's right. That was actually the U.S. Express's theme music when they would come out, believe it or not. So that is your bullshit fact of the day. Some other cool tag teams from that era. You got to talk about the Iron Sheik and Nikolai Folkoff. What about the dream team of Greg the Hammer Fountain and Brutus the Barber Beefcake? Of course, at this point, he wasn't the barber, but he would become the barber. Of the British Bulldogs, Dynamite Kid and Davy Boy Smith, the Hart Foundation, Bret Hart and Jim the Anvil, Nine Hart, the Killer Bees, and the Rougeau Brothers, just to name a few from this era. Let me ask you this. I'm throwing these names out here, sir. How many of them have you actually ever heard of? Uh, the, <laughs> the, the Hart Foundation. But see, that's why we're that's why we're the... we're learning the ropes here. Well, I'll say this, like I've heard I heard of the British Bulldog, but I didn't know he was in a tag team. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I've heard of the Iron Sheik. Yes. And, uh, you know, because he has such a great Twitter handle. Sheiky, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about some other tag teams I kind of want to point out to you here from the mid 80s. Let's talk about, of course, some world class championship wrestling. Shout out to WCCW. Uh, the Fon Erics, of course. I mean, they freaking were WCCW. Uh, I always loved me some Chris Adams and Gino Hernandez. I thought was a hell of a tag team. And the Fantastics uh, was also a popular tag team in that era. But, of course, we cannot mention the Fon Erics and not talk about the Fabulous Freebirds. And the Fabulous Freebirds, man, was probably so, I mean, they were so ahead of their time. I mean, they were really the first to kind of truly introduce the a concept of coming out to theme music. Um, I mean, there was other people that had, but I mean, they were the first ones really to kind of just run with it, if you will. Uh, and of course, you got to talk about the Freebird world that uh, where they could choose whichever one of the or two of the three members to be in a tag team match. And that counts defending any sort of tag team championship. So, Yeah. And the and the new day does that, or they did do that. Of course, yeah. unfortunately for Big E got hurt, but um, but yeah, yeah. And I was gonna say, I mean, honestly, that is really a term I I have not heard before. Oh, is the free bird world? Yeah. Well, there you go. You yeah. can add that to your lexicon. Yeah. So, hey, let's talk some AWA now here in the eighties. How about the East West Connection, the team of Jesse the Body Ventura and Adrian Adonis. Or the High Flyers, Jim Brunsell and Greg Gagne. You also have Buddy Rose and Doug Summers later on in the AWA. And the Midnight Rockers, who you would probably know as the Rockers. That's right, the team of Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. So there we go. So that is some of your AWA teams. And I'm just going to run this down for you. We're going to talk more in depth about some stuff here. Uh, Crockett Promotions, let's talk about them. Who you just saw last Sunday with Ric Flair's last match. I know. What a treat. Yeah. It was a good show, minus the last match. It made me sad, guys and gals. Yeah, but... <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to get off topic here, but I got, I got to address this. I don't know if you saw this or not, but apparently, according to reports... I mean, we saw that, how, like, Flair was just pretty much, like, drained. And it was just, like, he was talking like he was going to go out with Kid Brock or whatever. Well, guess what? He actually did. He went, I don't know if he went out with Kid Rock, but he went out and was caught at a strip club in Nashville called Tootsie's. And apparently, Ric Flair was found in the bathroom as he passed out off of the toilet. <laughs> and he was in a pile of his own feces. That's the nature boy for you. What a way to go out, right? Woo! <laughs> Yeah, that's a true story, or at least from what I've read. I don't know how legit that is, but yeah. That's the story, and I'm sticking that's to That's the story. It. I mean, that's just freaking adds more to the legend of Ric Flair. But we're not talking Ric Flair. We are talking tag team. So let's talk about some Crockett Promotions tag team. Speaking of Ric Flair, let's talk about his greatest rival, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And how about his partnership in the early 80s with Jay Youngblood? And we have to talk about some of the greatest tag teams the rock and roll express and the midnight express oh my goodness i know you've heard of the rock and roll in the midnight yeah oh yeah 
Most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. I mean, if you love tag team wrestling, those guys are the freaking, like, the groundwork for tag team wrestling. Um, Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard, of course, from the Horsemen. How about the Varsity Club and the Russians? I'm talking about Ivan and Nikita Koloff. Now, hold on. Were they actually Russian? Man, I'm really glad you asked me that. Here's a funny story for you. So, Ivan, a uh, longtime wrestler, well established. Uh, they brought him. They brought in Nikita pretty much just to kind of team them up, give him like some younger, a younger guy to work with. But the funny thing is, Nikita Koloff, man, you talk about living the gimmick. He lived the freaking gimmick, dude. Like he was constantly always in character, but he was not a lick of Russian at all. Hey, you gotta respect the gimmick, brother. No kidding, right? I mean, and and Nikita Koloff is one of those guys. I don't think really, truly gets enough credit. I mean, he was a great wrestler, a great interview. He got put in some pretty rough spots, I think, like uh, there when he was put in like the main event of Starcade 86, which was supposed to be Magnum TA going up against Flair in that uh, event. But man, just uh, Nikita Koloff's the man. If you all have never seen him, like do me a favor, like Google some of his stuff, look him up on YouTube. You won't regret it. We guarantee it. So that is just some of the greatest tag teams. But I want to talk to you, my friend, about probably, not probably, definitely, the biggest draw probably in tag team wrestling of all time. Let's talk about the Road Warriors. I mean, the Road Warriors, I know you've heard of the Legion of Doom. Oh, yeah. Hawk and Animal. Oh, my God. I mean, those guys, good God. I mean, those guys was main event players. I mean, you could put them on against anybody and people were going to watch them. And it doesn't matter if it was at the beginning of the night, end of the night, middle of the night, whatever. People would stop what the hell they're doing and they're going to watch them some Road Warriors matches. Uh, I personally, I grew up with them like in the WWF. And I know some people kind of don't look at that as fondly, that run there. But I, I liked the couple years they were there in the early 90s. Um, I marked out, man, when they come out and they feuded with Demolition, dude, because I was just like, because Demolition was a very similar gimmick. Speaking of which, why don't we just go ahead and we talk about uh, some more tag teams here uh, from that 80s era. And, of course, I want to talk about Demolition, Axe, and Smash. People shit on Demolition over the years. I love me some damn Demolition, man. I thought that it did a hell of a job, man. They had an amazing run in the WWF. And for whatever reason, they just don't really get any acknowledgement. Like, they had the record for the longest title reign for years until the New Day broke it. Um, I, I, and I think what it has to do with is I think there was a falling out between um, Axe and um, Vince because of the there was, like, a lawsuit uh, going on that they participated in. And I think it was kind of like, but, hey, maybe they'll actually get some acknowledgement now now that the uh, old man Vince is no longer there. So Yeah, there you go. So you never know. Um, love me some demolition. And let me just say this too. They had some of the most kick ass music when they would come out. Oh my God. Like, here comes the axe. Here comes the smasher. Well, okay. I'm not going to sing anymore because I don't want to scare you all away. Cause we want plenty of subscribers to come on in and subscribe now to the Panda wrestling network. Yes, most definitely. All you got to do is, uh, hit that little subscribe button right there. You can even easy. gift us up. There you go. Are you feeling generous? Are you feeling generous? I feel pretty generous. There you go. So, and if I can do it, folks, damn near 40 years old, if I can do it, then you can do it as well. Trust me. So, oh, oh, interesting. Did you know you can help support the stream for free if you have Amazon Prime? No Just link shit. Link it to your Twitch sub for free. It's as easy as one, two, three. Wow. There you go. Thank you, Nightbot. That is a helpful tip. And hopefully you all are doing that as well. The more you know. The, the more, more you, know. you know. So speaking of the more you know, let's talk about some other tag teams there from the WWF in the 80s, the late 80s, that is. How about Strike Force, the team of Tito Santana and Rick Martel, or the Twin Towers, Akeem the African Dream. Oh my God. You you need to look up the Twin Towers. That's a freaking hilarious. So pretty much you just just look it up and you'll get a kick out of Akeem. Y'all know, if y'all watch wrestling forever, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and the big boss man, by the way, that was the Twin Towers. The Powers of Pain, 
a barbarian along with warlord uh the bushwhackers luke and butch i love the bushwhackers but this is what i found find so fascinating about the bushwhackers and i think a lot of people forget this the bushwhackers was a badass tag team called the sheepards for many many years before they came to the wwf and i mean they were notorious for freaking barbed wire matches and just just violent 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 wrestling and they come to the wwf and fence looks at him he's like yeah i think i see you licking the fans heads that's some good shit <laughs> and there you go yeah it just turned him from freaking these guys who wanted to murder you to guys who hey oh had a stupid ass walk and and just yeah crazy but i love the bushwhackers growing up as a kid man they were probably one of my favorite tag teams to watch and i marked the hell out folks when the bushwhackers made a very rare appearance or rare to me anyway to when they were on an episode of family matters and they beat the shit out of urkel and carl winslow there you there go. There you go, man. Yeah, I mean, I, oh, I just, I love that when they, um, like, um, like I, I think back to the um, Boy Meets World episode where Vader. See, and like, the, so that's one of the things now is like, when I watched that back then, I didn't know who that was. Yeah. And now that I'm a 31 year old man and became a wrestling fan, I'm like, that was Vader. That's so cool. Right. And Jake the Snake was in uh, one of those episodes as well as Fader's opponent. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's crazy, too. And hell, that's going to probably be a topic at some point we cover. We're just wrestlers in all sorts of random like television shows or whatnot. So anyway. So, yeah. So the Bushwhackers loved us some Bushwhackers, some Bushwhacking, if you will. That sounds kind of bad. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay moving on we also got to talk about how the ruchos became fabulous and they turned heels i love that you were talking about wrestling themes there earlier i love some demolition but man i love the shit out of the fabulous ruchos theme oh my god it was so cheesy so 80s so over the top it was like jimmy hart was the manager of them and i'm pretty sure he produced the music too but it was just freaking that's another one you should look up on youtube man i uh, listened to some fabulous rujo's music love it uh and then of course you had other teams join in in late 80s like the rockers and the brain busters as well and i mentioned the road warriors they came in in the 90s uh oh whoops whoopsies i got a case of the dropsies but the road warriors are the legion of doom because it was funny because mcfence was like ah we can't call you the road warriors because we already have too many warriors they had like the ultimate warrior the modern day warrior carrie von eric although he was not using that gimmick but whatever but anyways uh they were switched to the legion of doom but they were part of a faction called the legion of the doom uh years earlier just throwing that out there your head's not exploding yet on me, right, Mr. B-Roll? Oh, man, I'm just like, I know. my brain's just getting bigger, like, just absorbing this wrestling knowledge. I know, like, yes, but... You have been called a wrestling encyclopedia. Yeah, I have. It's like, it's crazy. It's just all this shit just sets in the back of the mind here, man. What can I say? So, um, yeah, some other great tag teams from that era. Power and Glory, Hercules and Paul Roma. Rhythm and Blues, Greg the Hammer Valentine and the Honky Talk Man. I want to talk about one of my favorite tag teams, and this is another tag team I really don't think gets enough credit. How about some Brian Knobs and Jerry Sags, the Nasty Boys? The Nasty Boys. Oh, you Nasty Boys. I, dude, like the, the, they were great in the ring, man. I love their promos, and I love, I love their work both in WWF and WCW. Uh, nasty boys is probably one of my favorite tag teams of all time there i said it and i'm proud to say that um oh you got something oh you're just, i got something i got, got something. something i'm gonna cue you up here you ready all right kirk we would like to personally thank you for subscribing that makes a big oh that was the wrong it. sound effect oh come on let's try that again technical difficulty kirk thank you for subscribing there we go. Thank you, Kirk. You're the man. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about some other ones from that era. The Orient Express. Oh, we got something else. Hold breaking on. news. I am so sorry. Yes, breaking news. Okay. Breaking news. 
Wrecked by Wrestling. Our good friend, Wrecked by Wrestling, has had his head licked by the Bushwhackers. What? No. Oh, so is Panda. Man. Man, why couldn't I get my head licked by the Bushwhackers? Oh, that sounded terrible. Yeah, it did. Um, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. You guys got to see them uh, in person. I am fort- I did not ever get to see the Bushwhackers in person, but I did. The very first show I ever went to as a kid was actually a pay-per-view. All right? 1996. I'm going to set the stage for you. In your house, buried alive. So... Buried. Oh, Panda just said we've hit 10 subscribers already. <laughs> Thank you and God bless you. And let's just keep you subscribers coming on in, will you? But no, seriously, in your house, buried alive. Right. And I got to see the freaking Undertaker against mankind in a buried alive match. Holy guacamole, man. This match. And I, we had perfect seats too because it was like, the grave site was here. The wrestlers come out here. And then the ring was like over here. So it was like we just had perfect view of everything. I'll never forget as a child when the lights go out after the heels came out and attacked the Undertaker and threw him in the grave site and they buried his ass alive. The Taker's hand comes up from the ground and lightning hits down on Market Square Arena. It was awesome. But I'm sorry. I kind of got off track there. We tend to do that. We tend to do that on our cold cast. We're probably going to tend to do that on here on Learning the Ropes. But hey. But as we like to always say on Colcast, it's our show and we do whatever the fuck we want. So, ho! <laughs> there you go. I, I'm, I'm really liking that sound effect. I got to stop. Bad, bad. All right. So, anyways, um, what I point I was getting at, the first real tag team I got to see live was the Godwins against the New Rockers, <laughs> which was Marty Jannetty and Leaf Cassidy. Poor Al Snow, man. What a shit gimmick to be stuck into. Um, and let me tell you this, dude, the kiss of death in wrestling, if you're a tag team, is if you got labeled new, you were pretty much fucked from the gate. I mean, whether it was the new rockers, like I just mentioned, the new blackjacks, the new Midnight Express, it all sucked. So what you're telling me, when Panda eventually fires us. Oh, God. Please don't fire us, Mr. Like, Panda. It, it, we got 10 subscribers. Come on. It would be the new learning the ropes. <laughs> oh, the new learning the ropes. I see what you did there, sir. But no, uh, but yeah, <laughs> we're safe. Thank you. So, yeah, but any any tag team with the name new, it was just like, except for the New Age Outlaws, which we're going to talk about them here in a couple minutes. Uh, but a couple others name drop. I, Orient Express, I think I mentioned them. Uh, the Beverly Brothers, Bo and Beverly. How about the Natural Disasters, Earthquake and Typhoon, Money Incorporated, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, and Irwin R. Scheister. High Energy, Owen Hart, and Coco Beware. And, of course, the Steiner Brothers in the WWF. And we're going to circle back to that here in a couple minutes. But let's talk about WWF as it progresses here into the mid-90s. Then you had other teams come in. And one thing I will say, if, if you have you noticed there's kind of like a blend here of like the, like, it's not like they're just taking like one wrestler who's like a straight singles wrestler, like putting with another singles wrestler. And it's like they're they have like a joint gimmick is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, you picked yep, up on that. Yep. Because yep. I don't like you see that some in AEW now and uh, and other places, but you don't really see it necessarily as much as you did back in this era. I'm talking about, which I think that's part of the reason why I freaking love that era. That's like one of my favorite eras of tag team wrestling. But uh, mid '90s, we're talking about the Smoking Guns, Billy and Burt Gun, uh, the Head Shrinkers, Samu and Fa too. How about the Quebecers? The Heavenly Bodies, Men on a Mission. And then later on in the round 96, the Body Donnas. You had the Goblins. And I want to talk about this team here. I love this team. I think this team is criminally underrated. I love me some headbangers, man. I love the headbangers. And I'm going to go as far as to say this. I think the headbangers were really kind of one of the first tag teams out of the gate and I'm saying tag teams, not singles wrestlers, but tag teams that really kind of adopted the attitude error because like when they came in in 97, it was just like, it was something you hadn't really seen before. Like two guys wrestling in skirts, you know, and they had the paint on the bald heads, the freaking chain in the nose and stuff. But dude, 
I love me some freaking headbangers, Mosh and Thrasher. Can we, can we please, for the love of God, get a round of applause for the headbangers? There you go. Can I, I do. Ask, can I ask a stupid question, though? Yeah, there are no stupid questions on learning the ropes. Okay. Um, the head shrinkers. Yes. Do they actually shrink heads? Well, if I told you that, I'd have to kill you. Let's just leave it at that. Respect the gimmick, bro. Oh, nice. I saw that comment. What was it? The Headbangers was the first shirt. Oh, nice. I can dig it. That's like that was a freaking awesome shirt to buy, too, man. Was that the one? Um, let me see. I think it was like they had like, well, no, that was later on in like 98 where they had like the little spider web. And it was like the, I think Mosh was up here and Thrasher was down here or something. But they had some pretty cool merch, man. I love the headbangers. I wish they had a longer run. I popped hard when they brought him back a couple years ago on SmackDown, but um, man, dude, love me the headbangers. I can't say enough about the headbangers. Yeah, but, and I'll and I'll say this, chat. We're we're doing our best, like we've said before. This is our first time. We're learning the ropes while mm -hmm. we're doing learning the ropes. That's right. I mean, we're, we're just we're doing our best and. So if yeah. we don't acknowledge you, it's not because we don't think we don't like you, like if you're Roman Reigns or something like that. We do want to acknowledge you. We okay. Want... Okay. Going down a rabbit hole here. Uh-oh. Okay. So I have Nice this... was the spider web with their faces. Yes. So I had this idea today. Actually, as I was driving over here to your house. Okay. So have you seen Roman's new shirt? I gotta be honest with you, man. I have it. Okay. You know how he did that? Um, where like he was like, Daddy's not here anymore, and so he he has that um, shirt that is oh oh and Sweet Doll Face Creations just came to the chat. So this is Hi. perfect because I have a new shirt idea. So this this is where we're going. Okay, he's okay. getting excited. Okay, so we need to make a shirt. Okay, instead of acknowledging Roman as Daddy, acknowledge Panda Daddy. Ooh, I like it. Yeah. I like it. I can get behind yeah. it. Panda Daddy. <laughs> get little panda, Who's your daddy? Get the little Panda logo going on there. And yeah. Dude, Panda, we're, we're, we're giving you ideas for merch, man. Like, you, you got, yeah. Let's let's go with this. Yeah, let's do it. Hell yeah. Let's do it. So, let's do it. Yes, I'm behind that. Where the hell, what the hell were we talking about? <laughs> oh, uh, we were talking about the headbangers. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. So let's jump gears here and let's go to WCW and talk about some teams there in the 90s. And I loved this team. I want to talk about them here for a moment. Doom, Ron Simmons, and Butch Reed. Dude, I love me some Ron Simmons. Like, I'm one of the very first. Uh, oh, thank you, Sweet Doll for his creations. I think she's talking about your shirt, buddy. Oh, thanks. Uh, Pretty cool. I mean, yours is nice too, but it's not as nice as that, though. I mean, which is available exclusively over on SweetDollFaceCreations.com. Link in bio. No. <laughs> uh, I can I can put the link. It's in my TikTok bio. I can put the link in there. You though. do that, sir. You I'm do, do that. I'm gonna do you it. do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk it. some tag team wrestling. I'm gonna talk some Doom, though, man. Butch Reed and Ron Simmons. Okay, Ron Simmons is probably one of my all-time favorite wrestlers, and I really think he benefited tremendously setting under the learning tree of Butch Reed. And Butch Reed's another one of those guys. For I, I think he gets some credit, but not nearly enough as he should, man. Butch Reed was a huge draw in the 80s. Butch Reed was a talented-ass wrestler, and Butch Reed should be in the Hall of Fame. I don't know why in God's name he's not, but Butch Reed was the freaking man. But put them together with Teddy Long, two big powerhouses, they ran roughshod over WCW there. Uh, pretty much from 90 to 91. But probably my favorite tag team of that era in WCW, I got to talk about, of course, Rick and Scott Steiner, the Steiner brothers. I mean, I love, there we go. Nice. There's the link for the merch. Um, no, Rick and Scott Steiner, man. Dude, you talk about some other bad mother truckers. Like, they, uh, like, people... With like you hear stories of guys like going in and they would see their name on the sheet like they had to work the Steiner brothers and they were literally like shitting their pants like oh my god I got to work Rick and Scott Steiner and I love to this day how Scott Steiner will whip your ass if you do not call the Hurricanrana Frankensteiner it's always going to be a Frankensteiner 
It's not a her Karana. Her Karana does not exist. It is the damn Frankensteiner. But in all seriousness, though, what a freaking innovative move for a guy that was like 250 plus would jump up and grab you in a leg scissors and flip you over and do a backflip, essentially. I, man, every time I saw the damn Frankensteiner on my TV as a kid, I like jumped up and down. I love Rick and Scott Steiner. I I can do that move. I just don't like showing off. In my younger years, I could. (laughs) Yes. And, but (laughs) hey, I blame that on Scott Steiner because I ate it too many damn Shonies. Man, I wish we had a Shoney still in our our neighborhood, man. What's a think, Shoney? Oh my god. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna need a moment. Okay. All right. Shoney's was a magical like breakfast but well, I mean it was I think it was buffet throughout the day and stuff, but they had a breakfast buffet that was freaking killer, man. Love we used to have one out like on the west side of town. Oh my god. It was like I just remember getting like the French toast sticks and the Freaking some scrambled eggs, man, and and some sausage biscuits and gravy. Hell yeah. Love me this show. Are we still friends? Oh God. What are you gonna say? Just go ahead and say it. No, I was just Oh, because you didn't know what show is. Oh yeah, yeah, we're 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 good. 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 I thought you were gonna say like you didn't like biscuits and gravy or something. I love biscuits and gravy. (sighs) Thank God. Okay. Anywho. I don't like bacon though. Okay. I'm a weirdo. I don't really like bacon as well there. I like turkey bacon. I know. Yeah. We're odd. The what chat's about to call us just a bunch of freaking weirdos. Yeah. Oh, God. Please don't unsubscribe because we don't like bacon. We oh, love bacon. You're going to call us a bunch of freaking communists because we don't like bacon. Hey, what can I say, man? But no, um, the Steiner brothers, Rick and Scott, some other tag teams in that era. Of course, the Freebirds you had come on over to World Championship Wrestling. This form of Jimmy Jam, Garvin, and Michael P.S. Hayes. Uh, you also had the Young Pistols, the Dustin Rhodes and Barry Windham, the Hollywood Blondes. Talking about Brian Pillman and stunning Steve Austin. That's right. Not Stone Cold, but stunning. They had beautiful blonde locks. But I want to talk about one of my favorite tag teams from this era. And they were only around for, I would say, a year, if that, at least in WCW. I want to talk about the Miracle Violence Connection. That's a hell of a tag team name, is it not? Yeah, it is. I want to talk about some freaking Dr. Death, Steve Williams, and Terry Bam Bam Gordy. Just two badasses that would just beat the piss out of you. And I mean, they were about the only team really outside of Doom that could give the Steiner brothers a run for their money. Like, dude. And their matches in Japan, holy shit. I mean, that's where they really got known. And you're going to keep my two, t- we're talking Terry Gordy, Terry Gordy from the fabulous, the original Fabulous Freebirds. There you go. But, man, and there, that's those are some other guys I don't think get mentioned nearly enough nowadays, Dr. Death and Terry Gordy. But that is definitely going to be on a list for you to watch some of their matches, especially against the Steiner brothers. So you better add it now. I'm, I'm writing it down, dude. <laughs> All right. Let's talk some He's more. He's a mean professor. Hey, hey, we got a lot to cover here, man. A lot to cover. By the way, folks, I want you to stick around here in about 20 minutes. We announced, we talked about it. We've got a big giveaway that we're going to give away, and it is going to shock you. So stick around here momentarily as we're going to talk about that. But let's talk some more WCW. Let's talk about the mid-90s. Let's talk about the nasty boys joining up in WCW. Ooh. Or how about this? One of the- Ray. So I'm feeling generous. I'm feeling in a good mood. Are you ready for your second bullshit back of the day, sir? Oh, yes, I am. I know. All right. Two for the price of one. Two for the price of one. Interesting story. When Booker T and Stevie Ray came in um they actually were called they weren't called booker t and stevie ray they were called cole and kane that's right that is correct mr b row i'm gonna have you get on that with mr panda is talking about share the live before the giveaway announcement all right everybody we need you to share the live share it share it share, share it now sharing is caring share it now please and you're gonna want to. You're definitely gonna want to be around for this because this is freaking huge. I'm not. I'm not BSing you guys. This is a big giveaway. And so you're gonna be like, holy shit! You're giving that away. Yeah. And should we clarify? Like we are announcing it. 
You we're announcing it. We're not giving it away tonight, but we're announcing it, and we're going to give you all the details here. Yeah, but I, be yeah, I believe when you hear what we're announcing, you'll understand. Yeah. Yep, that's right. And don't forget to share that live. Share it, share it, share it, share it, please. Like, I want you to share it on Facebook. I want you to share it on Twitter. I want you to share it on... I want you to scream it out your damn windows right now, like, hey! Go over to the Panda Wrestling Company channel right now on Twitch. I want you to share it on MySpace. Uh, I don't know how productive that would be. But... Am I the only one that still has a MySpace? Maybe. Probably. Okay. Like, yeah. So. High five myself. No friends. <laughs> I'll be in your top eight, bro. Um, so, <laughs> Nasty Boys, Harlem Heat. How about pretty wonderful Paul, Mr. Wonderful Orndorff, and... Paul Roma, Stars and Stripes, Marcus Alexander Bagwell, and The Patriot, one of my favorites. Then they didn't have nearly long enough to run. The Blue Bloods, William Regal, and Beautiful or Squire, or no, what was it? They called him not Beautiful Bobby. It was, um, oh shit, now I'm having a brain fart. It happens every now. You get old, man, shit happens. Uh, but it was Bobby Eaton and, and William Regal, essentially. Uh, and, of course, we got to talk about the stud stable. And I know Panda knows all about that stud stable. Talking about Buckhouse Buck and Dirty Dick Slater. There you go. What a name that is, right? Yeah, that's a mouthful. And let me tell you something, too. You talk about some badasses in wrestling. That is another man who is a badass. You did not want to pick a fight with Dick Slater because he would seriously make you have a bad day. So... There we go. So let's go into the late 90s. And now I want to preface it with this as far as in WCW. This is my opinion. Some may agree with it. Some may not. I honestly think in the late 90s, the NWO era, I mean, outside of the outsiders, like it sucked. Like the, the, just, just the swapping back and forth of the tag team titles. It just didn't feel like it met the same. Um and, and if you want to argue on that, I totally respect it. But let me just throw this out at you. If Rick Steiner and Judy Bagwell can be your tag team champions, then you know you're in a shit show of a division. Let me just say that. Uh, but, I mean, there were some teams, like I said, the Outsiders. You had the Steiner brothers. I mean, geez, I feel like they had that damn match on every single freaking pay-per-view. Um, also, you had Lex Luger and Sting. The Faces of Fear, Ming and the Barbarian. Love those guys. I wish they had our damn run. And The Public Enemy. And guess what? That's going to segue into our next topic, something I hold near and dear. Let's talk some ECW tag teams. And The Public Enemy is the first one we got to touch, we got to talk about. The Public Enemy, Paul Heyman said this before in many interviews. Uh, the public enemy was really like not not only like the first team, but like the first act that really kind of put ECW on the map. I mean, their their matches they had against the likes of like the the Funk Brothers, Dory and Terry against the Bad Breed, um, the Gangsters and so on. Now, me as a kid, I got to be honest. I grew up with the public enemy in WCW actually, because I didn't start watching ECW to like mid 96, but, um, the public enemy, bless you child. Oh, you coughed. Okay. I thought it was, sneeze. It's okay. um, anyways, the public enemy, the public enemy was, was a ridiculously over act. I mean, putting through people through tables and shit. Uh, but I love WCW public enemy myself, honestly, like I say, that's who I grew up with. Uh, and believe it or not, they did have a run, all albeit brief run there in uh, WCW with those tag team titles. But um, that's pretty much, like I say, that the Public Enemy was was probably arguably the second greatest act in ECW history. And we're going to go over that here in just a moment. But I'm only going to give you one damn guess who that is. And I think you already know, sir. But I mentioned <laughs> some teams there. The Gangsters, New Jack and Mustafa. Let me tell you what I loved about the Gangsters. When they came out and they were playing um, Dr. Dre and Ice Cube's Natural Bone Killers in the arena, and they played the damn song on like a loop all throughout their match. It was awesome. As they just beat the shit out of their opponents all throughout the arena. I loved the gangsters. Gotta love it. Gotta the pit bulls, pit bull number one and pit bull number two. Uh, how about the Eliminators? Now, that was one of my favorite ECW tag teams, Perry Saturn 
and John Cronus. I thought those guys was criminally underrated, man. Um, and Cronus, Cronus for a 250 pound man moving like a freaking cruiserweight, dude. John Cronus was the shit. That was another guy that was way ahead of his time. Uh, and then, of course, Perry Saturn being like the known for him being like a paratrooper. I'll never forget, like, um, he 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 was like he had broke his leg or something in ECW. And like literally he had his leg like in a whole his whole leg was in an entire splint. Right. To keep it straight. And that son of a bitch with one leg jumped up on the top rope and jumped to the outside while his leg was in this splint. Man, you talk about crazy, dude. Like, I bet you Perry Saturn drank a shit ton of rootless coffee back in the day. Yeah, no kidding. If it was around, he would have. Yeah. Like, um, and if it was around, he definitely would have used the promo code Panda Coffee to save 15% off your entire purchase. Just say non collab. Non collab. That's right. With the exception of that. Uh, the FBI, the full blooded Italians, talking some. Uh, little Guido and Tracy Smothers. This is what I loved about the FBI is how like Guido was literally the only one that was Italian and the rest of them. Like freaking Tracy Smothers and their manager Tommy Rich could not be further apart from being an Italian, but that was like the joke of it. Uh, and of course, later on, you did have um, little Guido join up with uh, Tony Mama Luke, but um, the FBI, another great ECW tag team. How about the bad breed, Axel and Ian Rotten? And then speaking of Axel Rotten, you got to mention Axel Rotten and Balls Mahoney. They were a hell of a tag team. How about that name, my friend? You ever heard of Balls Mahoney? I actually have. You have? I actually I have. That comforts me. You know, you know ECW is one of my favorites. Oh, that's true. He was the chair swinging freak. Okay. Story time with Jeremy Cole, baby. I got a story for you. So in we had a backyard wrestling league as a kid. and um, Of course you did. Of course we did, right? And we would do parody of wrestlers. And we did a parody of um, it was Balls Mahoney, right? Only my character's name was Balls Baloney. Of course it was. Right? So there you go. Balls Baloney was my, uh, and I was not the chair swinging freak. I was the Rubbermaid swinging freak because I had like this big piece of like Rubbermaid off a tote. I acted like it was a chair. It was the 90s. What can I say? I was a kid. Uh, some other tag teams. We've got to talk about Rob Van Dam and Sabu in ECW. How about those impact players? Just incredible. And Lance Storm. How about Chris or Chris Chetty and Nova? I'm going to give you another one of my favorite tag teams in ECW. The dastardly one, Danny Dorn and the angry Amish warrior roadkill. Okay, let me describe this gimmick to you. You're going to love this. So Danny Dorn was kind of like this over sex kind of this dude who was just freaking like, um, I don't know. He was very like some of his move set names was hilarious. Like he had the bareback was one of his finishers. Um, he had, um, oh shit, there was, um, now I'm drawing a blank again, but um, he had a couple finishes that just the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am was one. Uh, and there's a couple others out there. But freaking, uh, and then his partner, Roadkill, he was an Amish guy. Literally had the, um, like the white, the, the black pants, the white shirt, the suspenders and everything, right? And like, he never said a word in promos, except for at the end, he only said one thing. You know what that was, Mr. B-Roll? What? Chickens. Take that for what it's worth. It's ECW. Chickens. All right. And we got to talk about the greatest tag team in ECW history. You know this was coming. The Dudley Boys. Get the table! Get the freaking tables. And man, oh man, the Dudley Boys. And I know for a lot of you out there, that's probably your favorite tag team of all time, and rightfully so. I mean, the Dudleys dominated everywhere they went, but... Their ECW run, though, man, that's where it was at because that's really where the characters developed. Now, do you know the story of the Dudleys of how they came to be? Kind of, sort of, a little bit. From, so it, it's from funny. What I've heard on Busted Open. It's funny because it kind of started as a comedy gimmick, more or less, and it was just like there was every sort of Dudley in the faction. Like you had Chubby Dudley, 
you had freaking Big Dick Dudley. Uh, you had, <laughs> I don't know if I should say this on the air, Dances with Dudley, um, who was a Native American. It was the 90s. You know, they weren't as sensitive. Like, whatever. Anyways, <laughs> Joel Dam Gertner, that's right. The quintessential stud muffin. Uh, hung, I'm young, and I'm full. I can't say that on the air. So anyways, uh, Joel Gertner, yes. All the Dudleys, though, like all of them. But like Devon and Bubba Ray are really like kind of what put it on the map. And here's the thing, too. It's funny because Bubba, when he came in, he was a comedy gimmick as well, as to where he always had the stutter. He, like he could never say his name. It was my name is. <laughs> and he had like a dancing gimmick, too, where like he would. It, yes. Yes. This is serious. Bubba Ray Dudley or Bully Ray, as you know him, like dancing around. It, yes. He was the dancing queen. The dancing queen but no um bubba ray dudley and then like it ended up where like he joined up with defon and then they just became some badasses and pretty much they wiped out the ecw locker room i mean they they pretty much would go on they said they would split up the gangsters they split up the eliminators they broke the neck of beulah mcgillagutty they destroyed the sam man i mean it was the dudleys dude the freaking Dudleys. And the thing is, too, they really developed their characters there because if you look at anybody in the history of ECW, and this is saying a lot, I don't think anybody got heat like the Dudley boys did. I mean, freaking look up. I think it was Heat Wave 99 where uh, Bubba Ray Dudley is like cutting a, just this file and fishes promo on uh on the crowd man i mean it is just like holy shit and you think the crowd's like gonna just jump over the barricade and shit it, it it's freaking awesome but the dudley boys was incredible in ecw but they would go on to greener pastures and go on to the world wrestling federation and they were a big proponent of one of the most famous errors in all of wrestling the attitude error that's right we got to talk about the attitude error here and man Great era for tag team wrestling. Yes, most definitely. I mean, you had the Dudleys. You had Edge and Christian. You had the Hardy Boys. You had the APA. I mean, first they were the Acolytes, and then they became the APA. But still, uh, the, I love the APA. Too. I loved it when they became the APA, too. How, like, and how they had the vignettes where they would be in the back and, like, chilling in their office. And it was literally just, like, a door and, like, a door frame in the middle of, like, you could easily walk around the damn door frame but you had to knock on the door to come in. And of course they would just get hired in money or beer to beat the hell out of people. It was awesome. Uh, also, we got to talk about too cool. How about uh, Brian Christopher and Scotty too Hotty and the new age outlaws. Cause I think you know them very well, sir. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. You know, you've met them. We met them in uh, Indianapolis. Remember? Yeah. I've got a podcast. I've got a podcast over and over again by the road dog. It's so, called Oh You Didn't Know. Speaking of podcasts, we have a podcast too. It's called Colecast, the podcast for all of us. And you can stream it and watch it on anything from Spotify to Apple Tunes to even our uh, YouTube channel, Cole TV. Apple and Tunes? Apple Tunes. Yeah, that's a thing. iTunes? iTunes. I'm Apple an old man. Podcast. Apple Pod. See, I knew they were calling it some shit now because I say iTunes and like my wife looks at me like, what the hell are you talking about? You mean Apple? So, oh, mercy. I'm an old man. What can I say? But yes, you can you can watch it, listen to us on there. And we got a new episode dropping this Tuesday. Just throwing that out there. So anywho, the New Age Outlaws, though, the Road Dog Jesse James and the Badass Billy Gun. That's part of uh, like. It was really what kind of helped put them on the map at first, I think, is they had some they came out right out of the gate, like with a feud with the Legion of Doom and kind of like just pretty much beat the shit out of them, more or less. And then, of course, their feud with Cactus Jack and Terry Funk, a.k.a. Chainsaw Charlie. And who could forget? We just saw this match a couple. What, what was it last week? Yeah. The dumpster match. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, they were like actually involved in the first dumpster match at WrestleMania 14 with Cactus and Chainsaw. And that was a hell of a match, too. And you may want to add that to your list someday to watch that match. So just throwing that out there. But love us some new age outlaws, okay? And the Attitude Era, like I say. And we're going to go a further dive here in a little bit on the Dudleys, Edge and Christian, and the Hardy Boys. Um, but I want to talk about kind of after the Attitude Era. And to me, 
this is when like tag team wrestling really started to like dwindle down uh in the ruthless aggression era like i mean there were some tag teams like you gotta give a shout out to billy and chuck um world's greatest tag team of course was awesome with Tar- charlie haas and shelton benjamin uh los guerreros with eddie and chavo um i tell you one of my favorite teams from that era and this and their team i don't think it's nearly enough credit how about Paul London and Brian Kendrick. That was a great freaking tag team. You would love them too because they were like uh, cruiserweights, pretty much. So high go. flyers. You know I love me some high flyers. You d- you do. Uh, Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch and Eminem. Uh, but like I say, man, it just kind of in this era, people really weren't like like they weren't really being pushed properly. I think. Um, and why and, was and that? They, well, because when your owner doesn't really care for tag team wrestling and it's, and I'm hoping now uh, as we're in this resurgence period, I'm hoping like, you know, that, that we do get some more tag teams established and going because I mean, the Usos are on a dominant run right now, but like who else can they work with? They work with the street profits, which they had a great series with them. I mean, how many times can you work with the new day? Uh, and I can't really name any other tag teams outside of those three. I mean, I guess I think, um, uh, Oh, uh, not I can't think of his name. The Chad Gable and um, oh, and, uh, and Alpha Otis Ca- Alpha Academy. Uh, they're still together, right? I think. Yeah. Shush, shush. So, um, but yeah, man, I, I'm hoping like you see a resurgence in uh, WWE, especially with tag team wrestling. And I think things are on the up and up there. Um, but that's another story for another time. But I will say, during this era, I think tag team wrestling was really kept alive by two companies and uh at least here in north america impact slash tna i think had a tremendous tag team division um that, that doesn't get nearly enough credit and you guys started off with one of the greatest tag teams in tna history uh of original tna stars about the wildcat chris harris and james storm america's most wanted boy it, it filled my heart so good when uh chris harris was back on tv and they kind of were working uh i don't think they worked a tag match officially but they were still on tv as america's most wanted yeah yeah so and i just love hearing that that music hit man we find the defendants guilty (laughs) anyways i'm sorry i gotta stop we're a sucker for the nostalgia yes how about triple x and it's not what you're thinking you sick freak i'm talking about christopher daniels and elix skipper was a great tag team. That's a freaking match you should watch from Turning Point. Oh, I think it was oh six. No, it was oh four. Turning Point oh four with it was a six sides of steel match between America's Most Wanted and Triple X. And holy shit, that match is off the charts. Awesome. Uh, the Naturals love that tag team in the early days of uh, Impact Wrestling, and of course later on. James Storm would have great success in another tag team. I know that you all find uh, are very fond of beer money with Robert Roode. And both are great tag teams. But me personally, I just I love me some AMW, man. Um, Motor City Machine Guns. I know, you know, the Motor City Machine Guns. Right. They got uh, their start really there in impact. And man, they're like one of the greatest tag teams of all time, arguably. Um we got to have a shout out for the ladies, which we haven't done yet. How about the beautiful people in impact wrestling uh, with velvet sky? Uh, Madison rain was in that group and they kind of did like some free, the free bird rule too. Angelina love was in there as well. Um, but man, the beautiful people, they ran rough shot over impact. They were so damn good. It was like, they practically had to create the knockouts tag team titles really. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course we got to talk about L a X talking about the original lax that is with um homicide or as i lovingly refer to as baby new jack because he looks just like new jack in my opinion and hernandez uh and i love the of course the version later on with santana and ortiz as well both 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 versions were great um but man impact wrestling had a great tag team division but also also we got to talk about ring of honor and the great tag teams there. And you know, the very first ones I'm going to mention, the Briscoe Brothers. I know them boys. you love them boys. And those guys, man, what a freaking run they've been on with Ring of Honor. I mean, been in the company for freaking, what, over 
oh, as, ever since it existed, really. So pretty much about 20 years, if not longer than that. Yeah, you, you yeah, you know that. I mean, they are probably my my favorite tag team. Um, I would love to see them get like some TV time on AEW. I would love it. They yeah. Don't, they don't have to be AEW, but I'd just love to see them. I agree. I would love to see them on there too. I think it's long overdue. Uh, how about uh, the Kings of Wrestling? Claudio Casconelli and Chris Hero. Uh, El Generico and Kevin Steen. Do you know who El Generico is, sir? I feel like I should. And I feel like I'm going to take a guess and I'm going to be really stupid. Go for it. There's nothing stupid. Is it Seth Rollins? No. Uh, but Seth Rollins was with Ring of Honor's Tyler Black. We're talking Sammy Sane. Yep. There, yeah, you go. there you go. Sammy Sane. And uh, Kevin Steen, or Kevin Owens, of course. Um, and we got to talk about the Wolves, the American Wolves, who we just saw in action at the Ric Flair's last match yeah. against the Mich Motor City Machine Guns. Now, now, hold on. Do I need to be writing this stuff down? Is there going to be a test? There is going to be a test coming up here momentarily. Crap! Sir. Yeah, there is going to be a pop quiz for the class. Yes, the lost brother of Elias and Elrod. <laughs> there you go. Triple H, make it happen, man. Um, the addict, let's talk about the addiction or SCU really kind of got their start there in, um, in, or in, uh, ring of honor, you know, Kassarian and Daniels, um, along of course with Scorpio sky later on red dragon. I know, you know, mm -hmm. and you may be familiar with this team. You ever heard of a team called the young bucks? Uh, yeah, I think I have. Yeah. So th like the young bucks and red dragon, holy shit, their matches in ring of honor. Oh, baby. That's right up your alley. And, folks, I have a good feeling we're going to be getting some of those very, very soon. I agree. I totally agree. So, speaking of the Young Bucks, let's talk about the resurgence of tag team wrestling nowadays, too. Of course, you got teams in AEW, like the Young Bucks. Of course, FTR. I mean, what can you not say about FTR? I, I got to be honest with you, Mr. B-Roll. I can't think of a team that's had a run like theirs in the past, I don't know, 10 plus years, man, this year. They are freaking killing it, yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's when, when you unreal. have When you have Dax Harwood, who's having such a good run, at, even as a singles wrestler, man, and, like, he's in consideration for wrestler of the year, it's like, holy shit. Like, FTR, oh, my God. They're, and, like, the Usos have had a great run this year, too, but I'm sorry, man. FTR is like freaking winning tag team of the year. I yeah, mean, they're yeah. I don't know who the hell else you can argue with other than maybe the Usos. Um, but I mean, look at the competition FTR has versus the competition the Usos have. I'm just saying. It's true. So, it's true. How about the Lucha Brothers? I know you love some Lucha Brothers. Yes. Pentagon L, I don't know what the hell we can call them now and what we have the rights to, but yeah, Pentagon and Ray Phoenix. Uh, Jurassic Express, and man, that is like a fucking weird thing right now. Like, um, my gosh, like the, the whole Luchasaurus is a bad guy now. He's a good guy. I don't know. I, I'm not a fan of that. Um, I know we're kind of getting off a little topic there, but like, yeah. Do you find that just as confusing as I do? No. What? No. Oh, Jurassic even... Express. Yes. Yes. So I was. I oh, you were was reading comments. I was oh. totally reading. The you were comments. doing your job, but you should be doing. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just no. It, it's all. It is all good. Um, yeah. Um, they got to make it right and have, you know, Christian have had Luchasaurus had this all planned. Like, I feel like that's coming at some point. It may make the most logical sense, but who knows? Let's talk some other AEW tag teams. The Dark Order, which. We miss you, Stu Grace, and God, I wish you would come back, man. I loved you and Uno as a team. Yeah, I was no hoping kidding. you would win the tag titles at some point. No kidding. Uh, it's not looking like it's going to happen, but... And then how about the best friends? All right. Sexy Chucky T and Trent. And one of my favorite AEW tag teams. Let's talk about the acclaimed Scissor Me Daddy Ass. Yes. Just the whole scissoring and daddy ass. They gave us that. I mean, that, that's enough right there. All you got to do. The Ass Boy, I mean, the Gun Club as well. You got Red Dragon. And your current AEW Tag Team Champion, Swerving Glory. 
which I'm still shocked they won the tag titles. I'm surprised I mean, they still have them. Yeah, I just, I don't know, man. It's I love them. They're great. But, I mean, I think we all know kind of the story is going to end up going where they're going to pretty much break up uh, at some point. But um, I don't know. Um, hopefully they have a successful run, but I just feel like we're, we're just knocking on the door. Like, I don't want to say they're transitional champions, but it's just, I don't know, man. It's just, um, it's weird. If you would have told me that was the next in succession to be AEW tag team champions, I would have been like, really? Well, here's the thing I think that happened. Okay. The Hardys were supposed to get the belts put on them. Uh, we obviously know what, what happened there. That makes sense. So they went to the next most credible team and they put them on the Bucks. Yeah. And then the Bucks had to have the belts taken off of them because they're going to be involved in the trios title and probably win it. Yeah. And they go. I mean, there you go. So it went from like boom, boom, boom. And here we are. Yeah. Just give them the FTR already. Come on, man. No kidding. Let's talk some WWE tag teams, which this isn't going to take us long, folks. The Usos, the New Day, and the Street Profits. That's pretty much what you got. I do love me some Street Profits. Too. I do too, man. I know they're getting ready to probably push them sing- in singles, but still, I do. I agree. I love the Street Profits. Uh, and that was a great match at Money in the Bank, too, with them against uh, the Usos. And of course, we got to mention some other tag teams out there in the realm of tag team wrestling currently. The Briscoe Brothers, of course, them boys. How about the Good Brothers? Throw it up, throw it up. And of course, Gorillas of Destiny. And how about this new generation of the Fawn Erics? I'm really digging the work that those guys are doing. And throw out a GCW team for you, Second Gear Crew. <sighs> okay, I think we covered the majority of pretty much tag team wrestling. Like, holy shit, that went by like that. Yeah. But uh, a lot of ground to cover nonetheless. But I told you, my friend, I told you you was going to have a test. Are you ready for your pop quiz? Oh, no. That's right. All right, it is quiz time, folks. So here's how this is going to go. I am going to ask you a question. I'm going to mention a tag team's name. And Oh, you're right. Damn, you're right. Bussy. I got to mention Bussy. Shit, yeah. Freaking love Alley Catch and, um, and uh, oh, my God. I'm, once again, wrestling brain, folks, when you have all these names in here, Effie, Effie, Jesus. But I love, uh, yeah, Bussy's awesome, man. I love some Bussy. <laughs> I know. So, anyways, so anyways, so here we go. I'm going to read you the name of a tag team. This can be simple since it's their first class here. Um, I'm going to read you the name of a tag team. Why don't you tell me if this was a t- is true or false, if this really was a tag team. Okay, I'm ready. All right. First up, the Ding Dongs. True. That is correct. Yes, good job. Straight out of the uh, Jim Hurd era of World Championship Wrestling. It was so out there that you put it in there as a trick. Yeah, but no, it was a real team. So, how about this? Techno Team 2000. False. And Techno Team 2000 was a legit team. It was short lived in the WWF in like 1995. Um, and I know Eric Watts was uh, in it with, I forget the other guy, but they sucked. I'm sorry. Sorry, right. not sorry. One for one. One for one. Next up, Mega Force. False. You are correct. Well, that's a great name, though, but there was no team named Megaforce. How about this one, sir? Head Cheese. True. Yeah, because, like, who the fuck is going to make that up? Yes. Al Snow and Steve Blackman. Very short 